This is a HeadGum Podcast. This very exciting episode of If I Were You is brought to you by Harry's. Harry's Razors. I think that's an ironic pun because it's like, it's for hairy people. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. <laughs> You've used Harry's, Jake. Yes, I certainly have. And? And I love it, baby. Yes, dude. Yeah, dude. Uh, There's a lot of big razor companies that always make, like, small changes. You know, like, oh, we added a thing here. We did this here. Uh, Unlike that, Harry doesn't believe in upcharging, which is why they made their razors even better, and they're keeping their prices exactly the same. You got that? I love that. Love that about them. So still just for $2 per blade, as compared to the four or more you'll pay at the drugstore, uh, Harry's will send you blades in the mail, and these are five blade razors that now include a softer flex hinge, a trimmer blade for hard to reach places, a lubricating strip, and textured handle for more control when it's wet. That's what's up. Uh, Harry's is so confident in the quality of their blades, they'll send you their popular free trial set, which comes with a razor, five blade cartridges, and shaving gel. It's a sleek looking box, too. Yeah, you get your free trial set when you subscribe, you just pay $3 for shipping. So if you just are curious about trying it out, they'll send you a free trial set. What more do you need to know other than that it's free? You pay $3 for the shipping, but you have to use our coupon code if I were you at checkout to get a post shave bomb for free with your order. Give it a shot because you're going out with your five o'clock shadow with your scruff all the time just once. Just once. I know what it feels like to have a nice little baby face when you go out. You feel youthful and you look beautiful. And if you want that free trial plus uh, a, a, a post-shave bomb for free with your order, enter code if I were you. So if it's harrys.com, H-A-R-R-Y-S dot com, enter code if I were you, get your free trial set and post-shave bomb. That's it. And Harry's is tracking how many people want that free trial based on our code. So if you do get the Harry's free trial set and want the free shave bomb and want to give us credit for it, yeah, you, you enter the code if I were you. That's it. Peace. Uh, Thank you. Uh, this is such a fun episode because the Bays is back in town. The Bays is back in town. Things, of course, got real. George is the realest guy we know. So uh, let's get right into it starting now. Welcome to the chillest advice hour on the internet. I'm George Basil. Who are you? I'm Mary <laughs> Tyler Moore. <laughs> Holy shit, awesome. And you? I'm also Mary Tyler Moore. Holy shit, two it's Mary two. Tyler Moores and one George Basil in the house. That's an orgy. Uh, that song, I think it was a song. Would you say it's that pretty. was a song? Yeah, I love that was written by a Luxembourger named Luca, whose song we've used before, Ooh. not this specific song, who's made another song for us. And his email said, by the way, you were pronouncing my name and my buddy's name, Manu, completely wrong. How are you pronouncing it? I think Luca and Manu, so I'm probably doing it again. Mm. He didn't clarify how to do it. Manu? Did Manu? Manu? Maybe it's Luca Manu? and Manu. <laughs> Manu. Yeah. Uh, Manu's a good guess. Yeah. Uh, interesting facts about Luxembourg. We have. Uh, That's fine. We're good. Okay. You're saying Luxembourg wrong. Too. Borg? It's Berg. I'm, Luxembourg. Yeah. Uh, I'm pronouncing it B O U R G. Luxembourg? Yeah. Luxembourg. Uh, we have a duke and our own language. Ah, uh, Luxembourgese. <laughs> Sorry, that's not that interesting. I wouldn't think interesting they have fact, a, a interesting. Language. I would. I mean that they have a duke. Yeah, but fuck dukes. <laughs> fuck dukes, dude. Yeah. I like. I like that song a lot. Really? That's mm-hmm. why I, I sort of chose it because it had your vibe, your yeah, aura. That, that, like, that was playing out of your car when you rolled up. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is your first episode since. Gosh. Who knows? Who knows when you were with us before? That's probably like two thousand and fine. That. <laughs> <laughs> it was during when we lived at that house we recorded outdoors. Oh, when I had the cabin. 
Yeah, yeah. The cabin house. That was the cabin house. Your sister was inside <laughs> washing dishes. And I could just like, I was just watching her wash dishes the whole time. Just you like, will never forget that. I will never in my life forget that. <laughs> Last thing you see when you die. I know. How uh, comfortable does it make you, Jake, when I talk about... When you think sister. of my sister washing dishes? Mm, she, I... Uh, <laughs> I would not, not not uncomfortable at all. I would kill for you to be my brother-in-law. Oh my god, Absolutely if we were bros. Kill. Yeah, are you kidding me? Yeah, that even would. in law, it's just that in still law. counts. Just yeah. by law, I would love to come to family functions. Oh man, that'd be great. Yeah, we'd, uh, we'd, have, we'd have so much fun. Yeah, maybe I'll just start. Totally. <laughs> start what? Just start. <laughs> start what? I'll go. I'll just maybe I'll go. I start. Yeah, soon. You gotta like, start. what's your next family thing? Uh, Rosh Hashanah at my Aunt Amy's house. Russian Shana? Russian Shana. <laughs> You're in, Russian dude. Russian Shana. Hot baths. Just me and my aunt. <laughs> oh, so this is just what, you, just what you wish my family functions were. <laughs> Russian Shana. You mean the girl I saw washing dishes? We're all going to a Russian Shana? <laughs> all right, never mind. You're not invited, George. <laughs> But we will see you at the Yom Kippur Breakfast. Yeah, I will come. Uh, that's going to take place also at a Russian sauna. <laughs> I found it March 8th, 2015. Whoa, what's today? March 8th, 2000? <laughs> no, <gasps> time doesn't work that way. Okay. You don't just get to guess. Wow. Uh, today, while recording, is September 21st. I want to say it comes out Monday, September 26th, 2016. So about a year and a half. Jeez, a year and a half's not a long time. I don't feel any more dead. But you're, <laughs> you're, you're much more successful, I would say, in the last year, 18 months. Oh, you're on, yeah. You're on TVs and stuff. Yeah, now. 18 months ago, we were embarrassed to even be seen with you. <laughs> yeah. And now it's like an honor that you're here. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Yeah. Well, that'll change back. Oh, when you I lose so. the jobs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or even just like the jobs stay intact. Did you have any of these TV gigs in twenty March eight? Like uh, yeah, I think I think all I'd done is shot the pilot for Wrecked at that point, but it hadn't been picked up. So Wrecked got picked up. Now it's a TV show. Yeah. There's going to be two seasons. It's going into the second season. Okay, yeah. uh, Flaked, which is a show on Netflix that you're on with Will Arnett. That is going. That starts October third, second yeah. season. Crashing a a pilot you shot for HBO got picked up to a full season with Pete Holmes. Shot that first season. (laughs) That second season is like So you're, that's already three for three on pilots to series, which is, it's kind of a long shot. like a good luck charm. Yeah, it's like the basal bump. It's the basal bump. And then didn't she, you were just also in Vancouver shooting something else. Vancouver for a CW show that my buddies wrote um, called No Tomorrow, which is awesome. Yeah. The cast and everybody in Vancouver was cool as shit. Um, (laughs) When you walk into an audition room now, you're just like, "Come on, let's get let's I don't get walk over into the- Oh rooms, yes, bro. <laughs> it's a, Basil's offer only. You think he auditions? Oh, oh dude. they don't offer me shit either. <laughs> oh hell yeah! I think it's actually kind of. I mean, I'm I'm so busy. I guess that TV's kind of out. I can't do anything else. You're no you're more. locked up. Luckily, the way that all those shows that you mentioned lined up, yeah, just by sheer. Luck. chance like they all worked in a calendar year it, like seasonally right like this is other. done and then yeah. for whatever reason now wrecked is shooting and uh, wherever because travels yeah. like because pete holmes show is you shot in new york, in new york yeah. right like that's so you're like getting to shoot a show in new york one in puerto rico one in vancouver and then one, one in here. venice beach yeah like that it's ridiculous it's incredible it is it really is i don't know what to do and to think it should be me <laughs> <laughs> oh what <laughs> that's not it's, it's mean it and it's not true. It's small minded <laughs> and incorrect. And it could be. It would be better if it were me as you, oh, as shit. your characters, for it to be I instead of George. Do you, do you think that makes the shows better or do you think that makes your life and me better? Me better. <laughs> All right. Just shows thinking. worse, me better. Who cares? What's George the dip? better. <laughs> George better. <Dadder. Brent. laughs> George dead. George Brent. <laughs> if George was just dead, I would get all of his roles. I'm you guys are doing two. great too. Look at this, man. This office is amazing. Yeah, we have an office. It's super profesh yeah. and mm-hmm. luxash. Yeah, we really? couldn't book any yeah. fucking parts, so we decided to just make an office. Yeah. <laughs> now we're now we're fucking nine to five losers. We build no, our own. We're not shit. artists anymore, dude. We're fucking business owners. We it's have not computers cool. everywhere. Look at this. There's not fucking, true. There's like three computers in here alone. No, uh, you our, guys can hold auditions here. Thanks, anytime. man. And we should. And we will. We should for parts that don't exist so we can reject <laughs> everyone. <laughs> just like everyone rejected us. Some sort of weird, very low stakes revenge movie. So we could tell everyone in the room Hard they pass. didn't get it. Hard no, pass. sweetheart. 
<laughs> I don't think so, sir. Try again. Better. You're, you're all wrong for this. <laughs> Why'd you call me in? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but this is not a this is not a web series. This is an advice podcast. It's actually the only advice podcast on the internet hosted by us. I'm Amir, and that's Jake, and we're with George today. Hello. I thought uh, it was yeah, Mary Tyler Moore, but no. Right. No. You've done you've done the program before. You get the rules. People will email us. Uh, they're in sticky situations. They're seeking our advice. They think me and Jake are wise. Wait till they get some of the basil wisdom. Ooh. Holy shit! These people are lucky because we're dispensing. I would say another hundred percent free w- free wisdom um, from the wisest person Coming I know. Yet. Oh, that's very nice. Hopefully, Eat from the trough. Um, this is <laughs> this first email comes from a lady, a lady named. George, you want to name her? Because we can't use her real name. Yeah, Martilda. What's that? Martilda. Oh, that actually is her real name. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, Martilda. I, again. <laughs> <laughs> I just spilled yeah. Shit all over <laughs> uh, Does Martilda have a last name? Yeah, Swint. That's amazing. <laughs> Martilla Swint. <laughs> <laughs> I already pronounced it incorrectly. Uh, hey, guys. I'm having some troubles relationship-wise and thought you guys could help. Whenever I'm able to find a boyfriend, everything goes really well for about a month or so, but then I get bored. I get bored of current relationships way too easily as my focus quickly shifts to other things and other people. This usually hurts my current boyfriend's feelings and puts an end to the relationship. They think I don't like them anymore, which usually isn't true. I just have a hard time keeping up a relationship once the new and exciting factor wears off, and I find something else that's new and exciting. I want to believe that I can find someone that I can have a long-term relationship with, but it's gotten to the point where I'm not wanting to date anyone anymore because I feel like our chemistry will inevitably fizzle out. Any advice for keeping a relationship going once you hit that point of getting bored? Thanks. Love the show. Love Martilda Swind. Martilda. Grazie, it's sort of, Martilda. It's <laughs> Tilda Swinton's <laughs> Hispanic cousin. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Hispanic nephew. Uh, wow. Okay. George, how, how long does it take you to get bored usually? Yeah, right away. Oh, instantly, first yeah, day. <laughs> pretty much. It's like, what's your name? Yeah, mine too. Adios. <laughs> not really. You're no. not even intrigued that, that you met a girl named George? <laughs> oh, never, he says that never regardless. Enough. It takes like, I think I have about a year threshold. I can do it a long time. I fall pretty deep and then it goes pretty long and hard. And Oh, you're in it. Yeah. And you get more into it. I get really into it. Second but, date, third date, more into it, more yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. One month, tenderness. two months. See, that's I've, I've, I've had that same <laughs> that same problem too. Because like, girls, uh, in my experience, have like understood the like the real quick fa- like phasing out. Like, oh yeah, we went on three dates and he wasn't interested. Like, right. that's people are, are conditioned. Like, that's yeah. normal. That, I think what's so. not What's not normal is like two years of head over heels. Like. <laughs> I want to share the world with you. Mm-hmm. Be with me. Be with me. We are one. And then after two years, you're just like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> like, <laughs> wait a second. Why don't you get bored earlier? You, you would have saved us time. Yeah. You dove headlong into this, swam out into the middle of the ocean and immediately <laughs> hopped Sunk on a speedboat <laughs> and, and, and went away. Yeah. You should have just broken up to me when I was close enough to shore to swim back. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, Why? Do you get bored after a, lo- a long time or quicker than that? Um... I guess both. Uh, whenever I've been bored in every long-term relationship I've ever been, and I've gotten bored. Um, and then there were stretches when I was single, and I would start to anticipate the boredom before it would even actually happen. Whoa. So I, that's like what you were saying before. I would like go out with somebody, and like even if I was attracted to them, in that same like dinner, I would well never dinner drinks those same <laughs> drinks. I would like not even a lunch. I, I'd go through everything in my head, be like uh, our. <laughs> our falling in love, our courtship, our our wedding, our marriage, our children, and then our inevitable divorce. Yeah. So by the end, I'm like, all right, this was fun. I Let's never have to divorce. see you again. Yeah. I'm divorced from you. <laughs> Let me nip it in the bud right now. I think Louis C.K. has a joke where it's like, why get married where the best possible outcome is seeing your best friend die? Like, yeah. either you die or you see your best friend die. Like, yeah. why not just not do that at all? Yeah. Then you get to, then you live a whole entire life without a best friend. Well, that's what, yeah, that's what she's starting to feel like. She's What's like, your threshold? Uh, I, I'm, as I get older, I get quicker to cut off. Yeah. I'm like, that girl's great. We should probably break up. Or like, <laughs> I'm not going to see her. I'm not going to marry her. And like, what, you've only been out with her twice. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not, what, am I going to like have kids with this 
person? Yeah. No, that's not going to happen. I'm not even enjoying the moment because I'm like, uh, if it's not going to happen, I would have I would have decided to marry her by what now. What do you think that is? Is it like it's a psychological partnership like well, in my them. in my mind, it's like the ladies that I find myself instantly attracted to are also not the ones that I like uh, get like romanticize building a life together with. Right. So like those are two different ladies entirely. Mm-hmm. So do you do you spend any time trying to pursue ladies you want to build a life with, or do you think that's like just not in the cards for you? I think I'm so picky in particular that it's hard for me to find that like magical one in a million person that like in the meantime i'm like oh i'm attracted to this person i might as well go on a date with her all right you let the you let the distractions come in yeah let the distractions come in and then see if maybe it leads to something i don't know there's a lot of people are like you know right away when i knew when i found her i knew and it was instant and i got it and then some people are like yeah you know it's fine for a little bit and then we like built up to the partnership of like the idea of living together and moving in and starting a family like you don't have to be sexually charged and new and exciting and chemistry for the rest of your life. At a certain point, that person has to turn into like, okay, now we're partners in life, make a family, and like we both rule over this mini kingdom together. Right. But there has to be like leading up. You you can't just like meet somebody and say like, okay, you're my life partner. I respect you, and I want to build a mini king- kingdom with you. You have to like let the let the excitement the wear off. Yeah, you like the. I think in the the ideal relationship, the the adrenaline, the excitement, the like I want to share things with you fades just as your like loyalty kicks in. Yeah, it's You're a like, crossfade instead of a cut off and then a restart. Right, but yeah. sometimes so this sometimes goes down, they don't this goes up. Sometimes they don't mix. Sometimes they don't overlap, and you can't like you can't run that like the distance in between to get to the uh, the next the next phase. And, and then, you have to keep your finger on that dial. For the rest of your life, which dial that that like uh, excitement versus loyalty versus commitment versus all of it? Like you have to. <laughs> I am in a trance. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's really true because like how many how many clubs do you go to where like the DJ sort of sucks at doing that and you leave? Yeah. All and the like, clubs I go to. Yeah. And, but there's like some. There's some. That's why like there, it's so rare. There's some really great DJs that'll keep you dancing the yeah. entire night. And, and then some people get married during the intense excitement phase, and then that wears off, and they're married. And I they're do like, that. Oh no, you did that. I do that all you the do time. That. I do that every Multi- time. I've been married <laughs> seventy times. <laughs> you have been yeah, married. I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You joke, but Love not it. too much of a joke. No. Yeah, you've been to, married. To get back. Oh fuck yeah. To get back. To <laughs> <laughs> to get back to her question, though, she said um, that Martilda said that she feels like she should be single for a while. And I'd probably agree. If you're losing that sensation of excitement and like that falling in love thing within a month with everyone or with anyone, uh-huh. then there's a good chance that whatever is going on should be like introspective and you should probably just be figuring your own shit out i completely agree you know but is it is being single also dating people or are you talking about not even dating anybody yeah i'd say probably date i don't know i'm kind of i'm in that position now where i've been i'm single now for a while for like the first and longest period in my life how long um Year. 21 years? 21 years. 21 <laughs> you were in a serious years. relationship when you were seven. <laughs> Ever since I started working in television, <laughs> I've been single. Uh, it's Isn't been a true, while. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's been a bit. And it's <laughs> great. And there have been dates and there have been uh, close encounters. And it's like... Of the third base. <laughs> <laughs> third base. Third base. <laughs> Just so you know, first date, third base. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> first date third um, days. but there's still so much to unpack like there's still so much shit that you know i'm not ready to do like you're saying like y- like it's i'm that person that you're that you run through that list of like uh criteria yeah what they're, how they're gonna fit into your family that's heavy shit man. right it's like okay so i have to be sexually attracted to this person and also they have to uh, get along well with my mother at Seder and also they want to raise a family in Los Angeles and Mm -hmm. also they want to yada 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 yeah absolutely Uh, what what if instead of a marathon the same girl shifting in and out of this excitement and loyalty it's a relay race 
So I'll date someone for three years. She'll yeah. pass the baton to somebody who's sure. now more well equipped to satisfy that next phase of I my believe, life. I, you, my you, life. Me. I do believe that relationship or marriages should be three year contracts. You yeah. should be able to go to the you table negotiate. every single three, like every three years. Be like, hey, are we still good? Are we still doing? What you we want your promise? option in or no? Yeah. yeah. Like you should yeah. be able to have a marriage. Check in every three years, and the default should be break up, right? <laughs> and like, unless you like really discuss it, you're like, all right, hey, let's do three years, let's do three more years. Yeah, that's like a good let's, idea. let's extend just one more year. I mean, the NBA limits it at four or five years, and marriage is so much more important than that. Yeah, who would want to sign a 39 year old to a five a, a lifetime contract? That's insane for no millions. <laughs> okay, um, about Martilda, I agree that she. She's not ready for a relationship. That's why it's not. That's why it's not clicking. But yeah. I think the attitude of being like people bore me is defeatist. She should have the attitude of like I haven't found the right person. Yeah, and I'm not going to settle. Yeah, and, I know a lot of people are like uh, I don't. I don't actually feel that with anybody. And then they met somebody that was like she or he changed all that. Yeah. Like I was always bored, but then that person right. made it better. And so think, that's what dating is. You yeah. you date them, and then maybe one day you'll find the person. That and even does the people you that you, even the people that you were talking about that you like build towards something with that you're like, oh, you know, there wasn't like a a Ooh, whirlwind romance. Smart. It was yeah. like it was a logical buildup. There's still a time, even in those relationships, where something clicks. And you feel like they're the, they're yeah, the but person. I don't, I don't envy those at all, man. The grinder relationships, like the ones that are just like, it's we hard, but... and work together and then <laughs> it started to happen after. It's like, fuck, you just like let yourself grow around this weed. <laughs> and it <laughs> so took it was like, your water. It was by accident. Yeah. We were around so often it, it had to have happened. Yeah. But I mean, one of those people in that in that couple typically too is the one that was like, I kept going after it, man. I kept yeah. getting after it. She and eventually she finally said it. But that's like you hear that at weddings, and it's like romantic and cute. It's like <laughs> I, I just found, I just wore her down. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers to Sally and John. Yeah, <laughs> Sally's dead inside. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that's how a lot of people live concessions yeah mm -hmm. i mean we live in a business where we're traveling and like bursts of work bursts of nothing can you imagine living in the same place working in the same city nine to five every night True. you come home at five you don't have to do any work from five to midnight you like have that stability and security i feel like that's uh, a completely different like way to start a starting point than like what you do specifically right you're gonna be in new york for three months okay so like what does your girlfriend in la th say about that and what if she's also an actress and she's gonna be in hawaii for the two months after that or shooting a movie in london oh, for like killer. <laughs> you know die. real quick i have a theory uh i think netflix is going to be the reason a lot of couples stay together i think i think millennial couples are going to have a better su uh, marriage success rate than our parents Oh, because of, and I think it's because of Netflix. Netflix and marriage <laughs> because they chill so hard. Well, because like chills cause forever. You, now you like and everybody has like these great shows to watch. It's like the best thing you can do with your significant <laughs> other. You come home from work, you cook dinner, and you're like, hey, I'll watch three hours of Narcos right now. Like right. I want to stay with you forever. I Access did watch to a, good media. I did watch a lot of more TV when I was in a relationship than when I was out. Like because when I'm alone at home, like I don't feel like the need to just like binge watch on a Netflix show. Yeah. But like, if I'm with somebody else in the room and I've seen that person day in day out for however long, you don't want to talk to them. Yeah how how much how how much can we catch up? How yeah. much can we get can to know each say? other? Yeah, we've already been texting all day. Now let's sit down and watch uh, Making a Murder or whatever the show is called. Uh, Making a Murder. Uh, do you want to answer another question? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this one's from another lady. <gasps> a 21 year old female named H Whitney. Hwetney? Yeah. Hwetney? Hwetney? W-H-E-T-N-E-H-U-Y? Oh, yeah. I hate that name. That's my. That's the worst name I think anyone's ever said on this show. Hwetney. 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 Oh, it's so... It makes you, you get, shudder. Yeah, you there's like, like saying it. You know there's like some words like moist and panties yeah, that people like fucking can't hear? Yeah. yeah. Mine is Hwetney. <laughs> oh, I've never ever experienced that. So that's, sort of sound making your skin crawl. Oh, good lord. What's the worst last name you could give her? Oh, Cummins. <laughs> <laughs> Whitney Cummins. Whitney Cummins. I hate it. 
I love the show, writes Whitney. I'm a 21-year-old female in need of some gui- <laughs> guidance. My boyfriend of four years have been, has been chewing tobacco off and on for the past couple of years. My man. The other day, I found a glass of tobacco spit under the bed. Gag. Uh, I was not snooping. I was just looking for my underwear. It was in the glass. Oh, <laughs> oh moist panties in the glass. Whitney. <laughs> And when I confronted him about it, he admitted to me doing it for the past month. He claims he is sorry, but he can't promise to stop because, quote, that is what addiction is. He wants me to help him by asking him every day if he's done it and by going through his stuff. I really don't want to be his mom and become a naggy girlfriend. Is this normal? Is he just making excuses? What do I do? P.S. With this truth bomb, he also confessed to have a crush on a girl in one of his classes that is cute. What the fuck? Should I be concerned? Always be concerned, Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> you Let's, should always be concerned as a rule. <laughs> Let's uh, tackle the first issue first. Yeah. Chewing tobacco. Mm. That seems like something you would do. I do. I do. You do or you did or you do? Did, do, and done. Really? Yeah. It's. Uh, I mean, now I chew this Nicorette gum, which is less disgusting because uh, you don't have to spit it out. What's your history with tobacco? Smoke cigarettes I've been as an a kid? addict since I was 15. 15 smoke cigarettes. Yeah. So you still over, smoke? Over 20 years. I still smoke if she's pretty. <laughs> I'll walk up and bum a cigarette if she's pretty. Yeah. Um, my dad is a, a lifelong smoker, and now for the last 20 years, he's been a tobacco chewer, so he dips. And it's then, like the little pocket right. shit. So and what's the difference between Nicorette and the dip? Nicorette is, is like a chewing gum. and, and It's just nicotine. Yeah, and for some reason, <clears throat> it's in a form where you just chew the gum. You park it. In your, uh, you guys want to try some? I have some in my pocket. God, no. no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Instantly, no. Okay. Um, but the, the chewing tobacco is that? Is it real that there's like glass in it and it cuts your lips a little? There's and goes like, yes. Yeah, so I think some of them, like skull or one of them, has like uh, fiberglass in it because the point is to <laughs> to have small abrasions on your gums. Insane. So that the tobacco can leach through and the insane. nicotine. Insane. Yeah. Insane. My dad will have cups of coffee, <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts cups. He drinks it, and then he spits in it. So he's carrying around a cup of coffee all day long. And last summer, they visited from Greece. And uh, I'm driving the family in a big like van that we rented, and there's a cup of coffee in the coffee holder, and I pick that. Oh, up. no! And I take a swill, and I almost killed six people. <laughs> all of us almost died. Because it is the most... his tobacco spit. I took spit. a big old swill of his tobacco spit. Oh. And what was it? What was That's it? how you become close <laughs> what to your was father. It? <laughs> yeah, disgusting. The most disgusting. I watched my mom do it once and it, there's nothing you can do but laugh at the person. <laughs> that's the terrifying thing. It's like the whole van lit up with laughter when they right. said that's when you spit almost it. killed them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just like <laughs> just to teach yeah. them a lesson. You think this is funny. I'll drive the car <laughs> off a fucking bridge. <laughs> it was horrible. It's disgusting. It's a disgusting habit, but as a tobacco and you have to spit it. You don't swallow anything, right? The gum, yeah. The gum you can swallow. The the dip you spit. The tobacco <laughs> chaw you spit. The chaw. the snet the snooses you can actually the swallow. snooses you looses. The, the chaw you bob. The elusive snooses <laughs> and the skull you bowl. <laughs> the snooses are elusive. <laughs> that stuff you can kind of like. It just it doesn't create a lot of a lot of saliva. It doesn't like hit those. Okay, so you understand. Points. I'm kind of skeptical and cynical when it comes to addiction. Like a lot of my friends are like, "Listen, I wish I could quit, but I'm addicted." Yeah. And I'm like, "Yeah, people are. It's hard. Like it's hard. if I if I also wanted to quit something I loved, it would be hard. Right. But if it didn't kill me, I would quit. And people do quit, so I know it's possible. But it's not something that well, that's you like just her- heroin. No heroin addict is like, sorry." I'm addicted. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay. Hey, <laughs> so, I didn't realize. Like, well, that's the problem. Die. Keep on. Right. Uh, being addicted to coffee is sort of like one thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nobody's like, nobody's going to like force you to quit that. You've but never smoking, had a chemical. I've never like been addicted to a chemical. So I don't understand like a, an addiction on like a chemical level. I understand like, yeah, it would be hard for me to give up um, sandwiches. Yeah. Because I really like sandwiches. But if it gave me cancer, I wouldn't have a sandwich. Yeah. That's as far as I can empathize. Bad news. Sandwich is giving you cancer. No. Okay. No. <laughs> Not my bologna on rye. You've had a cigarette. I think I've had cigarettes with you. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely have like uh, I've never been addicted to cigarettes, no. but I smoke them pretty regularly. You yeah, like two suck. packs a day. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not addicted. <laughs> pretty pretty if I, but if, if I'm drunk and hanging out with people that do smoke, I'll probably have a couple cigarettes 
uh, on like a Friday or something. Have you ever quit for a lady? Yes. You yeah. have? That was the, yeah. Uh, like in a relationship, you can't be um, successfully respectable. Respectful. What does that mean? Well, you can't, you know, like if your lady doesn't smoke, she doesn't want to kiss an ashtray. Right. I'm opening a Nicorette right Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> you're feeling it. I've been in relationships with, with people who uh, like used to be smokers, then like a year in the relationship just started smoking again. And you feel so helpless. You're like, wait a second. Yeah. I didn't sign up for this. I And it's like so – you can't really just break up with someone because they're a smoker. It sort of feels like a – like a Just a nuisance. Something they that can't help. To, but then yeah. it's like at the same time, you're like, this is disgusting and I don't want to watch you do it. Yeah. It's kind so, of weird because like you don't want to be like, to I forbid you to do it. But at the same time, you want to be like, I – will break up with you if you don't do it. Yeah. So it is kind of like you putting your foot down. It is But it's gross. also for their own benefit. Plus, so you can't be that bad. A jar under the bed. That's a little <laughs> too close to where you fucking... That's you just, just hear the jar hitting the bottom of the bed. <laughs> clink, 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 clink. And all he's thinking about is his saliva juice. <laughs> he starts fucking the jar. And, but, and this dude also wants her to, like, her to be the... She wants, he wants her to quit. He wants to like be grilled by her every single day. He wants her snooping through his stuff so he doesn't lie. Yeah, like, it's sort of on you at at a certain point, buddy. Yeah, yeah. but then it's tough because she's been with him for four years. What is it? Maybe that's her threshold. Maybe now's the time. Oh, yeah. pull the plug. Cut him loose, Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> Cut him loose, Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> Spinning tobacco. And then the PS is like a huge bomb, man. That PS oh, is yeah, huge. The, the PS is kind of weird. You don't confess to your girlfriend that you have a crush on someone. Yeah, you're you know? allowed to have crushes on people, but don't tell your girlfriend or boyfriend <laughs> yeah. about the crushes. You can't no. stop your thinkings, but you can stop your talkings. And your spinnings and your smokings. Uh, I'm so sorry about that. Um, do I, I really don't want to become his mom and naggy girlfriend. Is that normal? I think it's normal not to want to become his naggy girlfriend mom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is he just making excuses? No, I think you're probably he's probably prolonging the uh, the situation. Like you're giving yourself time by by victimizing yourself. You know, you're like, <laughs> you just have to stay on me. You have to tell me when I talk about it. Yeah. You have to tell me when I do it. I don't even think about when I'm doing it. It's like, yeah, okay, dude. Take some fucking... responsibility, man. I got yeah. my shit to do. Yeah. I'll quit next week if you remind me not to have it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do I do? What should she do? What would you do? I think I would say no. I think I would. I think I could put my foot down for smoking, and I don't feel like a bad guy because it's actually killing them. I would tell all my friends to stop smoking. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but what if they're addicted and they don't, and you have to be like what I, vigilant and make sure that they stop? I don't understand. The, like I'm addicted, so I, I'm addicted. I understand I'm addicted. But so that's it's the thing. Hard. Like, what if it doesn't even matter if you understand it or not? Like, say you're in a relationship with someone. Yeah. She's smoking, uh -huh. and you say you have to stop smoking. And right. She's like, okay, I will. But then she just goes out and keeps on smoking. What yeah. do you do? I Break up you, with her? Yeah, I think you'd be like, you're not, you're not doing what I'm asking you to you do. You shame the liar. Die. <laughs> <laughs> well, does she, is she still smoking two packs a day, or is she like, oh, I had a cigarette this week? She's I'm trying. You don't. Quit. You have no idea. You're finding cigarette butts in the bed, <laughs> <laughs> under the bed, in Picking a jar it up with tweezers. There's yeah. lipstick on this one. Like that. Yeah, it's, she it's this lips. job that you didn't want, where you have to be like sort of a detective. Yeah. But it's like not qu like it's not like you're catching anyone cheat on you or something it's like this very tiny little micro problem yeah that's but for recurring. me like smoking is the biggest like one of the biggest things but it's well, you illness. wouldn't get into a relationship with a smoker but what if somebody you were already in love with <laughs> just was smoking <clears throat> and then never gave up i guess it depends on how deep i was in the relationship if this was like 10 years in we have kids it's like all right now i have to fucking deal with this this issue i'm not going to divorce her four years in that's the, this is this is the exact scenario <laughs> four years is very long if, if you got to make a decision either way whether it's smoky or not four years is like you know who this guy is you're gonna marry him marry the smoker go for it deal with it or get out now uh you you spent four years growing having a good time and a life with this guy but if you're not going to marry him get out <laughs> also he's confessing about a cute girl in his class what's her email address we'd love to figure that out yeah it sounds like he's loading on the uh the back door exits yeah he's just like i can't stop also i love this girl <laughs> right maybe, yeah, that's, that's maybe this dude doesn't want to be in a relationship <laughs> yeah he sounds like he's being a little himself. destructive uh all right let's take a break we'll be back with more questions and answers and basil after mm. this 
This episode is also brought to you by FrameBridge.com. I love FrameBridge. So do I. You guys didn't know that the frame industry has been fucking us forever. They were actually primed for disrupting, and FrameBridge did it. Yeah, I don't understand why it's always been so hard to frame a photo. Like, you have to take it there, choose the different types of finishes, the frames. It takes so long, and it costs the, so much money. You print something like, uh, with, with like, a, uh, like high quality enough to take to a framer who yeah. takes like two months and charges me an arm and a leg. FrameBridge makes it all simple. You basically, you can even upload photos directly from Instagram or high-res photos that you've taken, uh, and then you can see the preview on the website, and they ship it to you framed uh, and everything is very affordable, and it comes to you pretty darn quick. And right now, if you go to FrameBridge.com and use promo code if I were you, you'll save an additional 15% off your first order. I mean, we got the FrameBridge photos frames uh, downstairs three, in our office. Three of them. They look great. Beautiful. They, they look great, and they really they make the place more of a home. So if you got empty walls or you want to decorate a little bit or you want to give somebody a gift – uh, a, a framed photo of yourself or them or anything in the world that maybe you guys took a vacation together and you want to say thank you, go to framebridge.com, use promo code if I were you to save an additional 15% off your order, and that frame will arrive just like you previewed it online. Uh, and the prices start as low as $59. And shipping, this is the best part because these are big things, shipping is always free. That is Incredible. By the way, you uh, you did mention the office is feeling a lot more like a home, but you, you I moved also, in. Yeah, you've been sleeping here, here and living yeah. here, and the you can't showering here and eating beans here. Also makes it feel like a home. Yeah, but well, none more so than the framed photos that we got from Framebridge. You can't live at the office, buddy. Absolutely. What I will start, 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 stop starting. I will start stopping okay. to live here very soon. Good, 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 good. Uh, that's once again Framebridge.com. Use com- uh, promo code if I were you. Thank you as well to Squarespace.com for sponsoring this episode. One of our day ones. Y'all know what they do. If you ever, ever, ever need to create a website for yourself or for a friend or for a loved one, they come to you and they say, I have a business or an online store or a blog or a portfolio. I don't know how to put it online. You just tell them, I got you. Yeah, dude, All right? If you're a professional and you don't have a website, then you're actually not a professional. I'm sorry yeah. to say. Yeah, I uh, say that as somebody who doesn't have a website, too. <laughs> so you know that I'm not a pro. Uh, everything is easy. There's uh, beautiful templates, seamless commerce tools, customer support 24-7. Uh, it's just, it's so easy and affordable. And not only that, but if you get a free custom, you'll get a free custom domain if you sign up for a year of Squarespace. That's a free dot .com, That's which is another cost. Too. Yeah. But I know what you're thinking. There's probably not any good available dot-coms, which is almost true. However, every time Squarespace endorses one of our episodes, we'll give you two available URLs. These are available at the time of recording. You could purchase these with a Squarespace for a year. This could be your websites. I'll go first. MaybeRabies.com. Ooh. You foaming at the mouth? Let me check MaybeRabies.com. Maybe I got rabies. Yeah, you upload a picture, and then you, a uh, licensed physician on the other end, will say, oh, that's not rabies. And that's MaybeRabies.com. Yep, maybe rabies. Mine is carrot pizza. Huh? It's carrot uh-huh. pizza. Okay. It's one food that you don't want and one food that you do. <laughs> uh, that's true. I do love carrots and hate pizza. What? Do you imagine the crust is an orange carrot, or do you imagine sliced up carrots instead of pepperoni? Sliced up carrots. Instead of pepperoni. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, if you go, you want to start a free trial today, go to squarespace.com and enter our offer code, if I were you, and you get 10% off your first purchase. Hell yeah. So you're not only saving money because you're, you're using Squarespace, the prices are so low, you're also getting an additional 10% off your first order. And then if you get a free uh, year of Squarespace, you get a free custom domain. Free custom domain, cheap prices, 10% off. Enter our offer code, if I were you. Squarespace, set your website apart. You should. Let's get back to George. I miss him. I love George. Where's George? Georgie! And we are back. Terrence. And we are back. What up, what up? And we, we are, are back. back. Uh, Jake and I are taking the show on the road to Detroit, Chicago, Minis- Minneapolis, and Toronto in the next, let's say, month. Oh, let me come to Toronto. Dude, are you in any of these cities? You can come by, do the show with us. I'm in Fiji next. <laughs> okay, so that's, I don't know, 11,000 miles away. You should do a show in Fiji. <laughs> you guys did Australia, right? That's yeah, really close. that was close. Fiji, yeah. If, mm. if only we were in Australia when you were in Fiji, that would be much more doable. Doable. Uh, when do you go to Fiji? <clears throat> I think like January. Oh, I that's think. great. For my birthday. And your birthday. For our birthdays. Hell yeah, dude. How close is your birthday to mine? Yours is the 7th? No. 8th? Mm-mm. 9th. 
Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh, fourth? Yeah. July, January 4th? Yeah, so July, ex- January 4th. Uh, exactly two weeks after. Oh, July 1975. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that is correct. Hmm. I'm in, I'm a January 18th baby. January 18th. When's yours? August 5th. Well, what hey, do you mean? Well, nobody's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> You tried. August just, 5th is a great birthday. Guys. Oh yeah, that's big time. A lot of like historical relevance to that one. Neil yeah. Armstrong. Neil Armstrong died. Yep. Your parents nope. might have fucked on George's birthday. Oh yeah, they probably did. And that was because the only time. You were a very premature baby. Jake was born uh, right after they fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Jake was born nine months too early. He came out the size of a poppy seed. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to see my mommy. <laughs> I couldn't wait. <laughs> he just like a poppy seed hung out on her. A breath. tiny little poppy seed. And I could talk right away too. And yeah. I had a very small voice. Mommy! <laughs> so this is our adult swim pilot pitch to you. You'd okay. play the role of the, the seed. The poppy seed baby. <laughs> the poppy seed baby boy played by George Basil. Beige as the seed. <laughs> Shooting in feet. And the doctor who births the seed. A bagel man of sorts who birthed the seed. George plays the seed and the bagel man doctor. The cartoon takes place in Fiji on location for no reason. It's animated in the United Arab Emirates. We're already writing the check. What are you? (laughs) This is an offer. Uh, Why are you you going to Fiji? For Wrecked, for that uh, TBS show, Wrecked. Got it. So just let's let's get season twos of everything and, and run it back, basically. Yeah. You yeah. got your shows. Just loop it out. Season two. It. Fucking Jack in the Box. Do 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 Basil, basil, basil. Bit pop goes the basil. That's fun. Yeah, that'll be great. You guys should come. Where are you guys? Where where are those shows again? Minneapolis. Minneapolis, Detroit, Chicago, and Toronto. Minneapolis, Detroit, Chicago, Toronto. Toronto. Toronto's coming up. Toronto's next week. Yeah. If you're listening to this, actually. You're listening to this on Monday. Our show in Toronto is this week. Oh, it's, it's on like, tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> go to our show, goddammit. Whoa. This is happening soon. You guys soon. are already at your show. Yeah. <laughs> our you, show is tomorrow to in Toronto. Yeah, or if you're listening to it on Tuesday or Wednesday, our show is happening now. You're Who missing our show. Who knows how much I love Canada. Yeah, t- wait, is, if, which show is on Tuesday? Is the stand-up show or the um, I think, podcast? I think our podcast is second, but why don't you guys talk while I look that up? I'll give I you have, a topic. Okay. Uh, let's say... George hasn't cut his hair in a while. Yeah. When is the last time you cut your hair? <laughs> well, I was married. And <laughs> Oh, you're Samson. <laughs> All she your divorce power is um, in your hair. Man, Canada is mine. Amazing. Yeah. Do you got a trim on that hair, on that mm-hmm. mane? Or do you just like not even cut it? No, no, I don't touch it. I mean, I touch it, but right. I don't work it. Zero, nothing. Yeah, I should probably comb it more than I do, but I, I definitely keep it clean with like washing it and conditioning it. <clears throat> but it just stays under a hat. Wow. Do you like it? I love it. You do? Yeah. You too can have one. Really? Mm-hmm. I wish. What do you mean? I can't grow that hair. What would you? What would your <laughs> hair? You're currently do? growing out your hair. Yeah, yeah you're working it, on it right now. It oh, 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 oh. <laughs> all, all snakes. <laughs> <laughs> you're Medusa today. You are Medusa. Uh, our comedy Jake and Amir and Friends stand-up show is uh, Tuesday, and our uh, 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 live podcast is Wednesday at the Queen Elizabeth Theater. It's like a twelve hundred person venue, so please, Hell holy yeah, shit, man, buy please come on out. Our website looks good, huh? Uh, this is not our website. All right. <laughs> this, is this is the, the Just for Laughs JFL forty two dot com website, huh. and it does look <coughs> Bless good. You. That is correct. Thank you. Uh, do you want to answer some more questions? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, finally, a question about from a dude. Like, let's let's help out the fellas. A question about that's why we started this dude. podcast. Yeah, I don't know. So what we could talk to guys. To <laughs> hey, if you're a girl and you're listening, turn it off or turn it up because we're about to get real. So I don't want you listening, or I want you listening extra hard, or just change. You the way cannot you please your ever. Shit. You're playing. You're trying. You <laughs> are trying to please the alt right and feminist. <laughs> On the right. same podcast. If you're a Trump supporter or a Gary Johnson fan, I want you to fucking turn this shit down, but not all the way. Because this medium, one maybe. this one is just for you. But remember, <laughs> ladies, I'm with her. All right, here you're we go. You're laying down. Stand up. 
<laughs> and vice versa. Dude, yeah, you got to just pick a side. You you're not going to get them all. This is you talking to Jimmy Fallon. Oh, come on. Let's talk about it. It's topical. <laughs> guys. Uh, do you have a guy's name? A guy's name? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Terred. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. T e t e r r d. Yeah, T e i r d. Oh, T e i r d. Yeah. Terred. Last name, Vigent. <laughs> Terred Vigent <laughs> writes, "Hey guys, I'm just gonna jump into it. I moved away to college this year, and in doing so, broke up with my old lady. But what since up? we since I've been here, we've been having Skype sex. Ah. And when she says she loves me after, I feel obligated to st to say the same. <laughs> but I moved away so I can have a fresh start. And I feel like if I do that, I could really hurt her badly. So I don't want to. What should I do? <laughs> <laughs> Cut your throat, pal. <laughs> cool guy. <laughs> this is you. Re I love that voice. Yeah. yeah. Hey, dude. Got cool broke up with my old lady because I needed a fresh start. Still hook up with her on Skype. I feel bad not saying I love you. <laughs> I don't want to hurt her. What should I do? Oh, I don't want to be with her. Deep, <laughs> Remember to hang loose, buddies. <laughs> I said, cut the cord. Get me the fuck out, but now I feel bad that I'm hurting her feelings. So I still oh, say I love you. Giggity, giggity. <laughs> locals only. Uh, it seems like he sort of soft broke up with her. Mm. Maybe yeah. this is his first breakup, and he's like, I don't want to just drop her off a cliff. I'll slowly, gently let her down. Yeah. Right, I'll say we'll break up, but then we'll have Skype The thing sex. that he needs to remember is that he's not being nice to her. He's deluded himself into thinking that having Skype sex with her and lying to her about loving her is the nice thing to do. Right, because love is nice and Sorry, sex is friend. Good. You're doing the mean thing. Because? You're taking advantage of her love for you so you can still jerk off on Skype and come. And then you say, I love you because you don't want to feel guilty for exploiting her. And then you want to go out and seize your cheese. But well, you, you can't have it all. Just like you can't have the Trump supporters, the Gary Johnson supporters, <laughs> the Jill Stein supporters, and the Hillary supporters. You have to choose one. Actually, I, I skipped a parenthetical. That question specifically, even more messed up, is uh, I kind of want a fresh start. And I feel like if I do that, for example, start talking to other girls, I could really hurt her badly. And I don't want to. Oh. He wants to break up. He wants a fresh start. But he thinks that'll hurt his ex-girlfriend's feelings, so he doesn't want to do that. It'll probably hurt Whitney's feelings. <laughs> oh, you think this guy is Whitney? Whitney? <laughs> yeah. Teared and wet <laughs> together oh, shit. at last. He's chewing chaw. <laughs> <laughs> He's scolding, bowling, and coaling. Yeah, I mean, you can't, like Jake said, you can't, can't have it. You got, I mean, you know, break up, tough to do. Got to, got to take the pain. You, you have to say. And you can't be the one that uh, consoles. Yeah, your breaking up breaking up hurts, but the thing that hurts worse is the half breakup. Yeah, is the is like the you know straddling both sides and like being hurt, being free, being hurt, being free. Like, what the fuck do I do? I'm hurting somebody. He need you need to cut her off. You need or no cut her. You need to end this completely. No yeah. more Skype sex. Understandably difficult when you're talking about like the half breakup, but you're still fully fucking mm -hmm. right. Like yeah. the comfort of a of a partner, ex partner, or whatever that you no longer see regularly, so you're not tired of them or like in the routine that you funked up. But instead, you're like you miss them, you love them still, and then you get to have sex with them. Uh huh. I get that. Yeah, that way you can have it all. <laughs> then you eat it all. <laughs> You're single and still fucking her. <laughs> Fuck pain. <laughs> what about gain? <laughs> but you, the, the Skype thing is, that's for me at least, that's one degree too removed. I would just, like, it's over. I don't I don't need to see your vagina. I have one. Right. Skype is <laughs> well, like. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I said I right. To, oh, yeah. Uh, I don't have I one. don't have it. No, no. <laughs> I don't have I don't have That's how one. George no, breaks I up with everyone. I have one. <laughs> I don't need your vagina no, no. anymore. Oh, no, I, I have one of my own. <laughs> no, no. So I you don't. do not have a vagina. No, I do not have one. <laughs> okay, because you're nodding yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> not a vagina. But now you're just moving uh, your head in circles. We'll see. I see it. I see her vagina. You oh, have a vagina. Wow. Awesome. It's a can. It's a can of <laughs> LaCroix. It's a pussy can. It's, um, yeah, I, I get the, the half, the half stepping on the way out the door is like, 
classic dude. But a lot of people confuse being nice with uh, being uh, doing what's easy. The easy thing for this guy is to like not have this tough conversation with his girlfriend, and he's able to say, "Oh, I'm being nice. I'm not hurting her." But you're not you're not hurting her like directly. You're not watching her cry because you're lying to her. Yeah. But that's more painful. Like this breakup, the one that he has to have, is going to be more painful than if he had just broken up before he went to school. Totally, one hundred percent. Ugh, I don't want to be nice. It's hard to be nice. It's easy to be measy and meansy. <laughs> so I'm going to suggest keep fucking her on Skype. Keep saying I love you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Say I've been thinking about you more and more while you're still dating other girls. That way she's happy, you're happy, and then you kill yourself in December. That way issues go away anyway. Your brain's on the fucking wall. Merry Christmas, right. Skype. <laughs> Please follow my advice. <laughs> hey, listen. There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. That what you said is the worst. You advise this guy to kill himself <laughs> I'm just uh, during saying, a Skype date. It's subjective. There's no wrong way to eat a racist. <laughs> <laughs> there is no wrong way to eat a racist. A That's racist. True. Uh, <laughs> can we answer one more question really quickly? Oh, we'll do God, a, that was my bond. We'll do a quick sesh. Yeah, dude. Quick uh, sesh. Uh, 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 one last girl. I can't believe it. Who? Three ladies. Three girls. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Taylor. Taylor. Tinky. <laughs> Tinky, Taylor. Tinky, Taylor. Soldier. And Stein. <laughs> Tinky, Taylor, oh, Soldier, shit, that's Stein. A, Taylor, Tinky, and Stein is like a, it's a law firm where one of the lawyers sucks. Can you imagine which one it is? I'm Tinky. <laughs> hey, John Taylor. <laughs> Julie Stein. And I'm Crack Tinky. Crack Tinky. Crack Tinky. Crack Tinky writes. One of my closest friends is three years younger than me, and I've always, always seen her as a younger sister. Her family has told me that I've been like a mentor to her. I've given her advice on pretty much every life topic for five years now. Her brother and I are on this, at the same college. We started out as fuck buddies three years ago, but at some point we became form, a formal couple, and we're now thinking about moving in together. Not only are we great together, but it would be cost-effective, and I would really like to give it a try. That being said, my baby sister from another mister has no idea I'm dating her brother. It killed me to hide it from her, but I didn't want to be a bad example to her. Mentors don't just have sex with the siblings of their mentees. I feel like if I move in with him, I would have to tell her that I've been low-key fucking her brother for multiple years now. I don't want to do this for many reasons, so what should I tell her? Love, Tinky. <laughs> Taylor Tinky Stein. I'm Tinky. You know the rule of mentors don't have sex with the siblings of their mentees. Yeah, the mentees. Go back to fuck buddies. <laughs> tinky. <laughs> have you ever had a secret or like a relationship where you had to hide it from someone? Yeah. What's the deal with that? All of them. <laughs> They're all secrets. It's They're called shame, secrets. Blumenfeld. <laughs> Some people feel it constantly. And I'm uh, embarrassed. Fuck ghosts. No, uh, I, I, it, it seems like. The mentee would understand that, you know, as long as you're still a good mentor, she'd yeah. be like, oh, and my brother? What are you teaching him? And then you could have like a weird family three-way. The real brother. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a potentially beautiful thing. Remember in Friends when uh, Ross finds out that... <gasps> oh, yeah, my that, sister and my best friend. Yeah, he's like, my best friend and my sister? And then he just softens. He's like, my best friend and my <laughs> sister. And he hugs him. That's like, that's what will happen. That's well, what will maybe happen. Not, it, it might take a little time. It might be tough. It might take a little time. But nobody... I don't think she's going to stay mad forever, especially if your relationship is like real it's one thing if you're like oh i've been fucking your brother and you know i hurt his feelings and now we're not together anymore now it's going to be weird i can't come over the house yeah but it's another thing to be like hey i fell in love with your brother i'm going to move in with him yeah. i'm going to be a bigger part of your family i is still it, love you is it all that shit that's is good it shit. is it public and safe to say that you've been in the place of this mentee um where Oh, where somebody was fucking my sister? <laughs> well, I don't know about fucking, but dating, <laughs> being with her, wanted to be with her and was afraid to tell you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That did happen. And wow. how did you react? I was pissed. <laughs> I was pissed for um, for a while. But then it, I got over it and it was it was beautiful. It was really nice. Is it me? It was you it was and you. the dish <laughs> earlier. Uh, I think the only claim she'll have at being quote unquote mad is the lying about it for three years i guess you shouldn't have lied about it for three years that's a little weird but i think she'll get over it it she'll be nice if she actually looks up to you and you're dating her brother she she, she might be pissed at first 
but you should still as tell long her. as she loves her brother. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, I hope she yeah. has a good relationship with her brother. What if like the brother was the source of a lot of the problems? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're I the need a mentor needed... because my brother is an abusive <laughs> asshole. <laughs> You're the reason I'm a mentee. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to help you. Oh, my God. That abusive asshole is hot. (laughs) I wish I had. I wish I was a mentee. Will you be my mentor? I you be my mentee? (laughs) (laughs) What? You retract. (laughs) All right. Never mind. Jake will just do it. (laughs) Sorry, Tinky. Uh, You're not a good mentor. I am the mentee. Great fuck Uh, buddy, though. Great fuck buddy. Has that happened to you? Uh, me? Yeah. No, I've never, I don't know. I don't, I don't like the, I don't even like, like dating friends of friends. I feel a little weird about that. Really? Yeah. My perfect girl's like, oh, nobody knows her. <laughs> Let me introduce you to this nurse from Torrance that I discovered. <laughs> Not like, oh yeah, I know that girl. My buddy dated her and like, she fucked this other guy and like three years yeah. ago and I tried to hook up with her once. Who's like that the- asshole friend that as soon as he finds out you're a girlfriend, he tells you the lo- like the list of people <laughs> she's fucked. Uh, it's like, if someone, if I'm like, oh, I'm dating this girl, when you'd be like, oh shit. Fucking Dave Rosenberg did something to her. I yeah. wouldn't say that, no. Rosie. Well, who's a girl that Dave Rosenberg has been with? Which bird, like Shakira. <laughs> shouldn't out them. He ruined Shakira. Right, if I'm like, oh, I'm dating this new girl. It's this girl. You would be like, uh, cool. You wouldn't be like, wait a second. I think, yeah, I would just be Dave like that. Dave Plowder at the Bagelsmith at 5 a.m. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't say anything, but I would know that it would get back to you. But oh, I would just, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I just, no. I seek to avoid that kind of stuff. But it's sometimes uh, unavoidable. Yeah. It's unavoidable. We live in a small community. Yeah. We're all funny peoples. Even a nurse from Torrance. She's the funniest <laughs> oh of God. all. Oh, my God. George married her. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, 13th new wife. <laughs> uh, all right. Cool. George. <laughs> yeah. Thanks as always. Hey, man. Namaste, I would, dude. Much I would love. do this every single Wednesday. <laughs> Sounds Even great though, to me. Yeah. We, we could do a remote from Wednesday. Fiji. Actually, we could come visit in Fiji. That'd you can. Cool. And then we can, we'll just, we just need three microphones. I want to come to a show. You should come to a show. Yeah. Let's maybe, figure it out. Maybe the Toronto. Do you have anything to plug? Not a damn thing, but thanks for having me. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> That's the cool shit, dude. Uh, That's the fucking That's the base, dude. <laughs> I love that shit. Uh, it's it's a shame because he did promise his sister he'd plug her charity. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. She's not doing so well, but hey. Anyway, thanks you, for having me, guys. <laughs> uh, the opening theme song was written by Luca. This closing one is a is a full song by Daniel. So thanks to Daniel and Luca for writing. Uh, if you have your own theme songs, your own questions, your own anything, submit it to if I were you show at gmail dot com. George will not always be here, but Jake and I will do our best. And it's sometimes that's enough. Uh, right. See you next week. Later, dudes. Thank you. Was a headgum podcast.